Hey everybody, welcome back to episode number 15 of the Zenith Super Duty build. Let me get you caught up to where I'm at right now. All right, the first part I'll show you is my hangar door. If you guys have seen some of my older videos, you might remember that the entire hangar door had this white one inch styrofoam on it for insulation, which didn't really do a good job. Then that one upper part there that's pink Half the white foam broke away, so I replaced it with a pink foam. And I decided just to do the rest of the door with a two inch pink foam. So the entire bottom section is done now. What I did over here in this corner, this is where my two e exhaust fans would go for the paint booth. And I wanted to keep those in the door in case I need to use them again. So I built a wooden frame around those and I put two layers of two inch pink foam just stuffed in there. So if I, if I want to use this, all I have to do is take the pink foam out and I still have those louvers in the door. I have to do this one little section right here above the window yet, but other than that, the entire bottom section is done. It's one layer of two inch pink foam, and then I'm going to put another layer of one inch pink foam on top of that. Probably next summer, I will do the white. I'm kind of tired of doing this. I've been trying to do it while also working on my Super Duty. And I'm kind of tired of doing the hangar door. Let me show you where I'm at on the wings. I was gonna build both of the wings kind of separately, like do the right wing, or what is that, the left wing first, and then get caught up on the right wing. But I'm into the part now where I'm running wires and fuel lines and things like that. And I just thought it would be better to do both of the wings at the same time. So I went into my stockpile of scrap wood and I built another, well, it's not a workbench, it's just a wing stand. And it's just two by four screwed together. I have little metal brackets holding the uh, other two by fours here. It was just a quick stand I built to be able to work on both wings at the same time. Now, right now, both of these wings are at the exact same point. The only difference is this wing is Clecoed. The, the forward top skins here are Clecoed. It's ready to rivet once I add the top skins. This wing here, I haven't Clecoed the, uh, the top skins around yet because I have to put in the pitot tube and I believe that goes somewhere about right here. So I still need to get the pitot tube. I need to figure out if I'm going with Dynon or Garmin or some other brand. Once I figure that out, then I will get the pitot tube and get that installed. And then all this is also ready to rivet also. Let me show you how I got these skins to this point. These skins are fairly easy to install yourself. You can see I just used a two by four bent it up, started putting Clecos in it to hold it. And these are the 1 8 inch copper colored Clecos. That's how the ribs are drilled as they come from the factory. So I put a Cleco in every single hole until all the holes for the ribs were filled with Clecos. Well, if you're building this airplane, once you get the skins Cleco to the ribs, you might look at the top of the skin and think, oh my goodness, this doesn't fit at all. It is a little bit wavy, but once you start putting in or drilling the holes and putting in the Clecos in the spar, it will lay down perfectly flat. You can see here, I have them all drilled out now with the number 40 drill bit, which is the silver colored Clecos. Once that was done, I took out every other one and I drilled them out uh, to the number 30 size, which is about an eighth of an inch. Just went down the line doing that. Once that was done, I came back with a number 20 drill bit, and this would be the final size for the A5 rivets. Once all those holes were opened up to the number 20 drill bit size, I put in the black Clecos, and that is the final hole size. So now, both wings are in the same spot. They are all final size drilled, and at this point, everything's ready to remove and deburr and clean up the edges. So once all the work with the drilling of the skins was done, I removed the skins and then I started working on installing this wiring. This is for the nav and strobe lights and the leading edge recognition light that goes in the slat. So let's take a look at the wiring. The wiring for the wingtip lights is run on the aft side of the aft spar 
And Zenith provides these white nylon standoffs in order to zip tie the wires to this bar. Instead of a rivet, I use these 632 screws to secure the nylon to the aft spar. So I have a real nice screw that fits in the nylon, a washer and a nylon nut. These are the three parts I have. I got them all at McMaster Car. Eventually those wires have to transition through the spar. So I drilled a hole at the end and then I obviously deburred that hole and then inserted one of these plastic snap bushings. I also added this little standoff to the bottom stringer in the last bay of the wing and it just holds the wire secure and keeps them just from flopping around in the wing tip. There's really nothing difficult about making a standoff like that. I just found some scrap aluminum, cut out the shape I wanted, filed the edges smooth, and then of course rounded the edges so there's no sharp points. I drilled two holes in it. This is a number 30 drill bit for two A4 rivets. Then I used my angle drill to drill the holes in the stringer, riveted it on, and then after it was on, I drilled out the big hole for the plastic snap bushing. Once all that was done, it's time to start routing the wire. You can see how these little standoffs work. You just put a zip tie through it. And I didn't pull these real tight yet because there's going to be another wire I need to fish through there. There's two wires total that go out to the wingtip. One's for the nav and strobes. The other is for the leading edge recognition light. I cut the wire a few inches longer than I probably need. And I'll wind up putting a connector on that end of the wire outside of the fuselage. This is a second wire I'm routing out. And when I cut these zip ties, a tip I have for you is to not use a pair of side cutters. These are called flush cutters and they cut the zip tie flush. They don't have, they don't leave a sharp edge like a pair of uh, regular side cutters would do. You can see on the right wing, I have the wire secured all the way down almost to the very root of the wing. And on the left wing, it comes down and stops right about here and it's not secured yet any further. And the reason why is because the pitot tube will be up in here, right in front of the spar. So we're gonna have two pitot static lines coming out here that will go through this spar and then join it. If I go with a fuel injected engine, we'll have a return line coming out of here. So I think from this point forward, or inboard towards the root, instead of just using these little nylon things, I'm probably going to have to make some standoffs where the wires and the pedostatic line and possibly a fuel return line can go through, just like I did on my Zenith Cruiser. I made some standoffs that kind of neatly hold and organize all the lines in this section of the wing. So before I can finish routing these wires, like I do need to run the pitot static lines, which I could probably do now, and then start making some of these standoffs. Well, the next step here is getting the fuel tanks ready to install. And I am doing that by putting in these fuel pickup screens. Tighten them enough to where they just feel tight to me. I don't want to go too tight and strip out the aluminum threads in the tank. And I'm using this uh, thread sealant here. There's many different thread sealants you can use. Pick whatever you want. And I like to put it on or put enough on to where it forms this little bead around the fitting and helps present, prevent any fuel leaks. The tanks actually fit pretty snugly into the wings, which is really nice. There's no movement of the tank at all once it's in the wing. They did a really nice design of fitting those. All right, let's talk about installing fuel senders. Between the plans and the construction manual here, this is where the fuel senders start. Zenith actually does a pretty good job of explaining how to install the fuel senders. And if you were with me during the cruiser build, this will all sound very familiar to you again. These are the fuel senders and Zenith mounts them right here. And the, the float here pokes into the tank and senses the fuel level. Now the problem I have with mounting them on the side of the tank here is that if these fuel senders ever go bad or leak and I need to replace them, 
I would have to drill out all the rivets that are in this skin. Then this skin wraps all the way around to the bottom. So all these rivets would have to be drilled out. Basically, you have to take off this skin to remove that fuel sender and fix it. Obviously, nobody wants to do that on a painted wing. Or even if it's not painted, nobody wants to drill out all those rivets. Now again, you're probably going to remember on my Zenith Cruiser, I mounted the fuel senders on top of the fuel tank. So that way, you can see that's where the fuel sender is. If those fuel senders ever go bad, all I have to do is take off this little fiberglass cover I made and I can get to the fuel sender. I don't have to take off this entire skin. So I really like mounting the fuel senders on top of the fuel tank. So my plan for the Super Duty is, again, instead of mounting the fuel senders here, I will mount them somewhere on top of the fuel tank. One of my favorite parts about building airplanes is just the thinking that's required and the designing. So I'm just going over different ideas and concepts for where to mount the fuel senders. And if you don't do enough of this, you're probably not thinking enough ahead in building an airplane. All right, time to remove the fuel tank and start thinking about installing the fuel senders. Well, what I'm thinking for the fuel sender is I'd like to get as much travel as possible. So if I install this to where the float is down here, then of course I'm only gonna get this much travel. So the further forward I put this on the tank, the more travel I get. If I flip it around this way, then obviously this part is wider. That's probably where I get the most travel. I still don't get full travel because here's full down and here is full up. But I'm still gonna get the most travel the further forward this float is. And as we're looking at the fuel tank here, this would be towards the, the root end of the wing or towards the fuselage. And remember there's dihedral on the wing, so all the fuel is always gonna to wanna to be down at this end. If you have one gallon of fuel in here, it's only gonna be down here and the rest of the tank will be empty. So it also matters where I mount the fuel sender this way. If the furthest I mounted here or the closer to this edge would be the most accurate when there's basically one gallon or zero gallons of fuel. If I take it and move it over this way a little bit, when the sender is all the way down indicating empty, then I'd know there's probably another gallon or two gallons or something still in the tank. So I don't really know the best way to do that. If when, I, when it reaches all the way to its bottom travel, do I still want a couple gallons in the tank? Or do I want to mount it over here so that when it reaches its lowest travel, my engine quits <laughs> and I'm basically out of fuel. So I just got to sit here and think about this for a little while and just really decide where I want to mount this. Once I come up with a plan, I'll drill a hole and get this mounted. All right, thinking a little bit more about this, we already know that Zenith mounts the, it on the side and their arm is bent a little bit, but that puts the float somewhere about here, maybe about six inches in from the, the edge of the tank. So I'm thinking if I mount my, my sender here like this, the float is still in, in basically the same position and it's forward of the tank, so it's in the thickest part of the tank, which gives it the most travel. So if I mount it somewhere about here like this, this would be the travel that it would get. So I'm kind of thinking that right about here might be the best spot for mounting the fuel sender. Well, I've got some thinking to do. I will take a day or so and let my brain think about the fuel senders. So I will end this video here. I thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate the positive feedback you guys give me. I'm glad that for some of you, these videos are very helpful. I will continue making them until the airplane is done. And then once it's done, I'll make a lot of flying videos with the Cruiser and the Super Duty. So until next time, make sure you subscribe. Please hit the like button or the thumbs up button. And for my one or two people that on every single video have to hit the thumbs down button, thank you because a thumbs down counts on the YouTube algorithm the same as a thumbs up. So you guys help me out too. See you next time.